Hello and welcome to the Somerville News Roundup with uh, Julia from the Somerville Journal. I'm Jane Regan of Somerville Neighborhood News. Julia, thanks for coming and joining us today on this snowy but sunny day. Thanks for having me, Jane. Appreciate it. I know you've been pretty busy at the Somerville Journal. There's been a lot happening in Somerville over the last couple of weeks. It seems like the city council and also down at the state house, everyone's rushing to get things passed and get things approved so that they can go home and celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas and, and Kwanzaa feeling they've accomplished something this fall. Yes, indeed. Actually, that that is so, so true. Um, the city council had their last meeting of the year. Um, last week and they they were they passed a whole lot of things they were very busy that night <laughs> had a very late night i think but a very good one oh, how um, many hours was the meeting do you have any idea oh, were goodness. you there or i'm not you sure no i was watching it online um which is a great great tip um <laughs> but one of the many things that they did was um finally passed the zoning overhaul that has been in the works for a very long time very long time i think it was about a little over seven years at least that they've been working on this right. this zoning overhaul um, the draft that was passed, the final version, represents the fifth draft to come before the city council for a vote. Um, so this has been a lot of work, long hours in the land use committee, long hours spent by the planning staff. Um, so this is a pretty historic moment. Um, but before they did pass this um, finally on Thursday, um, they had one final public hearing um, where a couple of interesting things were discussed. Um, there's, there's a lot in this ordinance, it's 552 pages. Mm -hmm. um, so while you know anyone can go online to SomervilleZoning.com and read it, yeah. um, it's a lot to take in, uh, for sure. <laughs> have you so read it? I, I have not read every page. I can't say I have. Um, <laughs> I bet Mark Niedergang has read it. I'm sure he has. <laughs> yes, um, but there are a couple things discussed that are kind of going to be you know ongoing discussions, even though the zoning overhaul was passed. Mm -hmm. um, there was some conversation about the phrase "pass and tweak." at the final public hearing oh. that um, George Perikis kind of brought up and the council was discussing. It was a joint public hearing with the planning board, so it was the council and the planning board discussing this, that you know they have been working on this for a really long time, mm -hmm. but passing the perfect ordinance is impossible. And trying to do that is gonna delay putting new zoning in place that is desperately needed because so much of the zoning is out of date. This is updating, um, a lot of the zoning is from the early 90s some of it is from the 20s okay. it is old um, and i think you know i was uh, talking to uh, counselor uh, jt scott of ward too and i think he mentioned that some like two dozen buildings are actually like meet the zoning code code pretty much every single building in somerville has some sort of special permit or overlay or you know something it does not actually meet zoning so this new zoning code is going to it, first of all, is going to bring things up to code in a way, and it's going to heavily influence the new development that comes in. Mm -hmm. And related to that, a couple of the big things that were discussed in terms of ongoing um, tweaks um, were the LEED certification requirements. Right, so for someone who doesn't know what yes. that means. So LEED certification has to do with sustainable building certification, so it, it, has, it measures numerous factors. Uh, it can do with you know, um, water, water use, um, like stormwater runoff, um, green roofs, um, how close the building is to transportation. Um, there are numerous factors that are measured in this. Um, but there are four standards, uh, certified, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, and pretty much um, most buildings are silver. Most buildings that try to reach for this go for silver. Some of them go for gold. Platinum is pretty up there. Um, but what Somerville has done is said that any new lab buildings have to be platinum LEED certified. That's great. Right, it is. However, there are some, there are some people at the public hearing that were speaking to how there really isn't a precedent for lab buildings to be built platinum certified in a commercially feasible way. Mm -hmm. um, so pe they have concerns that having this requirement in the zoning is going to kind of um, stop any new lab development, which Somerville definitely wants to attract. I see. Um, so what the planning board decided is that they, they are going to pass the, the zoning code as it is, yeah. um, but that they're going to look at it. And I think in, the, um, in January or maybe or, you know, early February, the city is actually going to be holding a forum to kind of bring in some experts in the field and hear about whether this really is a feasible requirement or whether they should uh, lower it to gold. Um, so there are definitely some ongoing things. Um, Davis Square was another one that came up. Yeah, because of the heights of yes. buildings, I think that yes. so there people were... are concerned that the 
current zoning law, correct me if I'm wrong, but the law that was just passed has some building heights that would that would kind of similar to the building heights that are have been allowed for around Union Square that make uh, both visitors and residents and local businesses be afraid that they'll suddenly be in a canyon yeah. with tall buildings and no light and we'll be in some kind of a Kendall Square but with narrower streets type situation. Mm -hmm. Is that, was, am so I correct in that? Just about. Um, the way this went down was um, it was not actually the final version, but a version prior mm -hmm. where the city um, in the draft they brought before the city council had significantly upzoned Davis Square um, and the area around it. And what happened is because so much community, so many community members were like, no, this is not what we want. We want a community process. We don't want this to be in the zoning. What ended up happening is actually in the final draft that was just passed. Davis Square has remained at four-story zoning, um, but there is a community process going on right now for a Davis Square neighborhood plan. Okay. And we, I covered that um, a couple months ago when that was brought before the community. So that does have um, some suggestions for upzoning the square, but that is a, it's its own community process. So I what see. the council has decided to do is, is not put that in the zoning code to leave that to the community process that is currently on, underway mm -hmm. um, to kind of let the community shake out how, how that's gonna work. So it, it has not been decided yet. Okay. But as of now, the Davis Square zoning has remained at four stories, yeah. Well, there's I, a lot more as it's very long. I was long, gonna so. say, I feel like <laughs> I should have a little bit of reading over yeah, the holidays. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I'd be interested to see what they say about green mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and all that. Um, well, talking about community process, mm -hmm. um, there were some changes that happened on Broadway last August. Um, yeah, where September. new mm -hmm. bus, uh, bus and bike lanes were put in um, and members of the community, some members of the community felt that there had not been enough community process about that. And so there were, um, there were people writing things in um, the Somerville Times and writing letters to the editor. And I think there's an online petition saying that the red bus only lanes should be painted black. And so I guess as a result, the, um, I think it was the Committee of the Whole, it was the Traffic and Parking Commission and the Committee of the Whole held a hearing on uh, December 9th, um, I think almost to make up for the fact that they probably should have done a little more outreach sooner. Yeah, sure. I don't know, I wasn't around much this summer. Um, you were, I think you were at that hearing. Mm -hmm. I think that was another late night, right? It was. It so was tell us hearing. a little bit about that and also, does that mean there might be some changes coming? I think it's def it's too early to say whether there will be changes. Um, you know, the the hearing was very much an opportunity for the council to gather um, to gather input. I mean, it, it was a public hearing, obviously, so there wasn't a ton of discussion by the city council. Um, but you know, it was it was really mixed. Um, a lot of people spoke. It was very very heavily attended. Um, and yeah, I heard there were people sitting on the floor. Oh yeah. It was very, it was really crowded. Yep, along the sides of the council, crowded, standing in the back into the hallway. Yeah, um, and you know, definitely, you know, even though these have been controversial, many people there were there to speak in support of them. You know, so a lot of people showed up and turned out and said, "These are keeping my family safe." You know, I take the bus with my daughter to get her to daycare. I, you know ride a bike, my family doesn't own a car, like these bus lanes are making a huge difference. Um, so we, you know, encourage the city to, you know, keep them in place, you know, mm -hmm. while the kind of infrastructure catches up. Yes. Um, but some of the complaints, you know, there were some complaints about how there just wasn't enough, um, you know, community input and community process back during the summer. Kind and I of think there were some parking in. spots lost. Exactly. That was another thing that was I think there were. Yep. So that happened in Cambridge also, which is where I live, and there was a big uproar. And um, people claimed that they were having less business and they were, it was hurting their business. And I don't know if there were ever any statistics that showed that business was being hurt. I do know that I, and as someone who has taken a bus that's run on one of those red lanes, it is so much faster. And I am so much more likely now to take the bus, the number one bus, if I'm going down to Boston Medical Center where I, I have to go sometimes, mm -hmm. I am much more likely to take the bus now that we have those dedicated lanes. Um, yeah. But again, I'm someone who I drive, I also bike, although I don't like biking in Somerville because it's dangerous, um, and I walk and I take the bus. So yeah, I think the idea of catching up and um, doing outreach is important. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect there won't be any changes, but I, we're not the ones deciding yeah. things. There um, may be, you know, some of the other things that were discussed were 
to do with the parking spaces, how that's impacting businesses. Mm -hmm. So there may be, you know, some talk about how, you know, daytime business could be encouraged, you know, even if it's not by adding back parking spaces, but other initiatives the city could In do. In Cambridge, what they did is they went into the residential neighborhoods mm -hmm. and they made it two hour parking spots for anybody going back in behind gotcha. the blocks where where some street gotcha. front ones were lost. Yeah. I thought that was a good solution. Mm, no, that's an interesting solution, yeah. So, yeah, th there's a lot discussed, but uh, definitely. So, um, Somerville Neighborhood News was there, although uh, we didn't, we don't, we're not quite as quick to the, quick okay. to the publishing as you are. <laughs> so um, we did recently publish a story and uh, there's a great video that uh, gives us a chance to hear from a couple of uh, residents. I think it's four different residents from four different neighborhoods, some who are in favor and some who are not. So let's take a look at that. City of Somerville officials held a public hearing for members of the public to express their concerns and suggestions about the bus and bike lanes on Broadway, which were implemented in August 2019. These are some of their thoughts. It's a, it, that it's a, a good project, a good plan, and it seems to be working well from what I've seen. So I was concerned if there's other people who uh, are opposed to it, and if their if they're concerns are unreasonable perhaps and uh, have already been addressed I wouldn't want them I wouldn't want the city to take away the bus bike lane unless there was you know absolute you know proof that it's causing problems safety problems or other so um, yeah I'm concerned that it'd be taken away or changed I'm in support of it and uh, I think it should stay unless there's some really good reasons and I haven't heard any any overwhelming reasons uh, for the last hour that I've been here. I live in an apartment building with eight people. Uh, there's only one parking space. Uh, so most of us don't drive. We, bi we bike, we take the bus, we take the T. Um, I feel that projects like the Broadway bike lane are a very good step for Somerville um, in supporting people like us who don't drive. As far as what Somerville can do for climate change, um, supporting low carbon transportation methods such as biking or taking the bus is something that we definitely should be doing. These businesses that have been there for years and years up on Broadway are losing so much business and going out of business. It's ridiculous. I think the bus line should just be taken out. Leave the bike lanes, yeah but put in a parking spot for the elderly and the handicapped. We want to be able to bike, we want to be able to take buses and public transportation and take our kid around in a safe and healthy way and we want to be in support of the city of Somerville creating more opportunities to do that. I do think that they need to think about how the, uh, what the impact is for people with disabilities and for elderly folks who might not be able to uh, I guess access the businesses in that area and that I hope the city takes very seriously but in general I hope that they ignore concerns about parking. We pay so little for parking in this city. It's a tiny fee to register your car and it feels really unfair to sacrifice the safety of tons and tons of families, tons of bike, bus riders and pedestrians. After the implementation of a dedicated bus lane on Broadway there has been an increase in bus ridership. 230 more bus riders have been taking it on weekdays and over 400 on weekends. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Diego Marcano. Yeah, so that just gives an idea, um, you know, directly seeing and hearing uh, some of our neighbors. That's the thing I love about video. I'm, I, I started out writing mm -hmm. and only started uh, shooting and editing video. I guess I was at, it was after I turned 40, which I think you're a long way from. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I still love writing and you know you can do it in your underwear and stuff but um, but when you go out and you get video of something or of people or of an event it makes it so much more it makes it, it makes the it such much more of an empathetic and psychological and uh, social and cultural connection I think with your viewer slash reader mm -hmm. so yeah so I encourage people to um, go to somervillemedia.org slash SNN and you'll see that latest story um, Diego Marcano who's um, one of the reporters here did everything himself uh, shot the video wrote the story and took the photos so yeah take a look um, now there's another law that they were passed. I'm not sure if this is the state level or the, no, this is city, the city level. level. Um, so th this was passed uh, a little while ago. Okay. Um, it's kind of Somerville's version of the Jim Brooks Act, um, but it goes into effect December 26th. So I wanted to uh -huh. kind of bring it up. Okay. Um, so it's called the Housing Stabilization Notification Act or the HSNA. Um, and it has to do with um, evictions. So essentially what this law says, um, 
And it's a city law. The city law, municipal okay. law. Is there a state version of it? Do other cities have it? Um, no, I believe Somerville is the first city um, in, oh, in the state. To groundbreaking pass again. Like okay, yeah. so what? So tell us what what's <laughs> sure. in this law. Um, so it's it's relatively straightforward, um, but what the law says is that um, when a landlord is serving an eviction notice um, for any reason to a tenant, they have to include a list of resources. Um, as well as you know, uh, council um, and and the rights that they have as a tenant mm -hmm. during an eviction process. Okay. Um, that's it. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty it. simple. Yeah, it is. However, um, it is actually controversial, obviously. Um, but the reason that Somerville decided to do this was because um, when it comes to housing court, I think it's like over seventy percent of landlords are represented, and under. 8%, I think 8% of tenants are. So they're, what they're trying to do is like, no matter the reason for the eviction, you know what I mean? When, whatever's happening, even if the tenant is at fault. Or the alleged reason. Or the alleged fact. reason, precisely. Right. Um, they're hoping to just have more tenants represented or know that they can be represented, okay. know where to go if they have a question, mm -hmm. if you know the reason for the eviction is um, you know, founded or unfounded, or you know, yeah. just essentially to just even the playing field. Yeah. Um, I, I spoke with Director um, Housing Spility Director Ellen Schachter about this, and she was really excited about the opportunity that this presented for Somerville, um, and kind of just the the way that it just it seemed to be like this kind of straightforward solution to hopefully start fixing some of this imbalance. Yes, um, and that when they were doing research for this. Um, for this law, they found that you know many lawyers um, or housing lawyers have said that everything is better. Everything is better when both parties are represented. Well, that's, and so, but the housing court is a state level court. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but this is yeah, this seems great. It's kind of like um, it's just a, almost like a public information campaign, yeah. but targeted mm -hmm. to the people that are actually impacted exactly. by a process. So that yeah, that's really it. Um, yeah. And you know, and we just kind of I worked with her to kind of just get some information out there because um, though it goes into effect December 26th, um, if an eviction has been served um, but it hasn't yet kind of progressed to court, it mm -hmm. is retroactive so the landlord must deliver um, a list of these resources and the lists are, have been developed by the city so it's, it's city mandated, you don't have to develop your own list oh, okay. if you're you a landlord. Oh, you just go and get the you just paper go and or find them on the city website. Or yeah, whatever. It's on the right. OHS website so somervillema.gov slash slash OHS. Um, and okay. you can find both of the lists, print them out, and serve them. Um, I'm going to go look, even though I'm a, I'm a tenant and yeah. I don't live in Somerville, I'm going to go look anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's you know, helpful. It's good exactly. to know. Mm -hmm. it's that um, yeah, yeah, so, and then there's another law. Um, in fact, it's really interesting. If we talk about uh, the tenant, uh, what's it called again? It's the Housing, st 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 the Housing Stabilization Notification Act. Okay, so that act, yes. the bus and bike lane is not actually a law, but it's a, a change. And then there's this other law that passed uh, recently, although some say that it's an amendment to a law because there was a, a law like this on the books. But this is almost completely new. Um, these laws are really looking out for the little guy and the little they seem to be. girl, <laughs> gal, I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, and the little, you know, gender neutral they. Um, so this one is something that actually uh, I, I actually did some reporting on. Mm. And what's the exact name of it? I know it has to do with wage theft. I'm not sure of the, the full name. I, I've just been seeing it referred to by all the counselors as the wage theft ordinance. Yeah. Um, it's like actually one of the strongest wage theft ordinances in I the state. I think in the yeah. country. Oh, yeah. In okay. the country, I think, because um, I know that um, some of the, pro the proponents of it are trying to get national attention for it. Sure. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I've been a progressive journalist for, well, I don't know, about three and a half decades, mostly working outside the U.S., but working quite a bit in the U.S., I had never heard of this. And, and I read The Nation, I read In These Times, I'm sure I've read articles, but I never really, it never clicked to me what a massive issue this is nationwide, not just in Somerville. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like local mom and pops exploiting, you know, maybe a person who doesn't speak English very well. This happens at Walgreens. This happens at, um, you know, supermarkets that are national chains. And um, it has to do with wages that are withheld, um, overtime wages that are due and are, not, are withheld, or sick time that is not paid, or if someone gets injured, the, the, the boss encourages them not to report it so that, um, you know, they don't, like the, 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 the 
the employer doesn't have to pay whatever it is, right. like, you know, disability or whatever. And so then if you're a worker that's precarious and you're like, uh, I guess hmm, I, if I report it, maybe I'll lose my job. I don't know what I'll do. So it's an amazingly, massively horrific national phenomenon. <laughs> Uh, so did you, were you at that meeting when they cut past that, or have Actually, you guys written about it yet? We have not gotten a chance to write about it, but I know the Somerville Neighborhood News has done some coverage, so yeah. can you tell me a little? Well, I got obsessed with it, so, <laughs> so um, I went to a meeting, and uh, I, I did write an article. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of research also at the national level, and I did... Uh, I did shoot a video, but the audio is not very good, but I was encouraged by my colleagues uh, to try to make it as good as possible and to get it online just because mm -hmm. it is something that we all ought to know about. Mm -hmm. uh, so this video is from a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it gives a, it lays out sort of like why this kind of law is needed in every community and why a city law actually can help. Let's take a look. Right, so um, the city can't force people to pay uh, back wages. It's really the state um, that can do that. But what the city can do is develop these lists of basically bad actors. Mm -hmm. um, what's really interesting is um, one of those bad actors is right over there. As far as, I mean, this is as of November 4th, so this could have changed. But according to the state attorney general's office, um, the Herb Chambers companies owed... Um, had still not finished paying back 
uh, pay, paying their workers 116, I think the fine was $116,000. Um, the fine was because they told the workers they had to have clean uniforms, mm -hmm. and then they told the workers that they had to turn their uniforms in and that Herb Chambers people would wash them, and then they billed the workers without telling them. So it was deducted from their paycheck without telling them. Oh my goodness. And so somebody complained, and so Maura Healy's office looked into it, and that's what it added up to at all the different dealerships. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so yeah, so the city, the, a city can't like necessarily force um, force that kind of payment. What, what will happen if a company doesn't pay is there's some kind of a lien put against them, and until they pay their until they pay it back, they can't get some kind of a permit. I can't remember. You have to go actually read our article because sure. I've been onto a couple other articles. But it's really great that the city passed this. Um, the city passed it not because the city councilors only are so awesome. It really did happen. It was a huge collective um, effort by. Um, local and statewide unions, um, labor advocates, um, people who are right here in Somerville and involved with um, you know, labor organizations and our revolution Somerville. So it's an example of uh, what can happen when people do work together um, as, a, as, a, as a community and then get a few city councilors involved. Uh, I know Mary Jo Rossetti was on it right away and Will Ba, and then everybody else. I mean, how could you be opposed to someone getting their fair wages, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I guess that's about it. At Somerville Neighborhood News, we do have a couple of uh, stories in the works. Um, let's see. We recently did one on opportunity zones, and that's uh, really interesting. Um, that's online. I think it's also been used by the Dig Boston newspaper. Um, and that's really important to look at. It's related to development in the city, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's very complicated, but uh, it's important to understand what opportunity zones are and who they might be giving opportunity to, because it's not a level playing field, to use your term. Another story we did has to do with Foss Park, the Foss, fixing up Foss Park. That's a story that I did with one of the interns, Stephanie Wittenbach, and um, that actually the Ste Somerville Times ran it. I don't know if you guys ran that story, but you can also find it on our website and you can check out the video. And then we have another, the, our last one because I asked you what's coming up next week. You're not quite sure. I'm sure that we have one piece coming up on having to do with something you wrote about a, way, a while back, which is um, the lead pipes here in Somerville, the, mm -hmm. the homes that have lead pipes, and a city program to help get rid of those lead pipes. Um, all right, you guys are busy. I love it. Well, you know, you gotta. Get, we're just like the city council and the state reps. We want to get everything done so we can get a break too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it from the Somerville News Roundup uh, from the Somerville Media Center here in Union Square. Julia, I want to thank you for coming down today, and everybody. Hope you have a safe and happy uh, holiday break. But remember, stay tuned to the news because there are a lot of big issues happening. I mean, there's a vote right now for impeachment as we speak. So let's all stay tuned and stay active and engaged with our communities, and we'll see you in 2020.